Hello everyone, in this video tutorial I will explain you how to convert state space models to transfer functions. I will explain you how to do that analytically and then I will explain you how to do that in MATLAB. So what you can see over here is the post I created that nicely summarizes everything that I will explain in this video. This post contains all the equations and all derivations together with MATLAB codes. A link to this post is provided in description below. However, besides this post, you can also find other tutorials I created. For example, over here you can see a bunch of tutorials. So for example, if you want to know more about dynamics tutorials, you can click here and you can find all the tutorials over here. Also, you have mechatronics tutorials that are also interesting that can be found over here. And uh, of course, I have control systems tutorials and I think there are currently more than 10 or 15 tutorials over there covering various topics, starting from linear system to nonlinear system to coding and model reference adaptive control and system identification, etc. In addition to this material, I will also perform step-by-step -step derivations in this video. If you like this video and if you find this video useful, please press the like button and the subscribe button. Okay, so let's start with derivations. We are considering a linear time invariant system that's represented by this state space model. Here, x is a state vector, u is an input vector, y is an output vector, and a, b, c and here we will add the D matrix and D matrices are system matrices. Now, our goal is to transform this model into a transfer function form. Usually in control systems we denote transfer functions by W. Here one very important thing has to be mentioned. Since this is a multiple input, multiple output system, this transfer function will not be only a function, it will be a transfer matrix. Since the input in the dimension is M and the output dimension is R. Okay, so the first step is to apply the Laplace transform to our state equation. By applying the Laplace transform to the state equation, to this equation, we obtain the following equation. S times X of S is equal to A times X of S plus B U of S and the state, actually the output equation is the following c times x of s plus d times u of s. Now, here are a few important remarks. Laplace transform of x dot is basically s x of s minus the initial condition x0. However, since transfer functions are defined by assuming zero initial conditions, we basically set this term to zero. And that's why you have the term over here, S X of S. Standard practice is basically to denote the Laplace transforms of real variables or time domain variables by capital letter. So if we have X of T, lowercase letter, the Laplace transform will be x of s. Similarly, if you have y of t, the Laplace transform will be y of s, capital letters, 
and if you have u of t the transform will be basically u of s Laplace transforms are linear operators that's why we don't have any nonlinear terms here since the Laplace transform for example of a times x is nothing less than a since a is a constant matrix times x of s okay so not to confuse you here I have nicely rewritten our equations here is the state space model and here is the transformed state space model okay now let us further work on these equations so from the first equation from this equation we can write s identity minus a multiplying x of s is equal to b times u of s so what I did here I just moved this term on the left side and group the equations grouped actually the terms together now assuming that this matrix si minus a is invertible from this equation we obtain x of s is equal to si minus a inverse times b u of s okay so we were able to express our state in the plus in the Laplace domain as a function of b u of s a and s complex variable now we substitute back this term in the output equation and we obtain y of s is equal to c and instead of x of s we write this term so we're having s i minus a inverse b u of s plus d u of s now from this equation we can group the terms since u of s is multiplying both terms and we can obtain the following equation y of s is equal to c s i minus a inverse b plus d multipli multiplying u of s this term over here is our transfer function or better to say our transfer matrix so at the end we were able to write y of s as w of s times u of s and this is our transfer matrix now in the case of single input single output system that is when input is a real variable and the output is the real variable this is not anymore a matrix equation it becomes a scalar equation and then we can simply write y of s over u of s is equal to our transfer function and here's our solution so we were able to arrive at our transfer function given by this equation starting from our initial state space model okay so let us illustrate this transformation with one example here is our example here is our state space model and our goal is to compute a transfer function corresponding to this state space model that is we need to compute this expression the expression that you can see over here given by the equation number eight so first of all you can see here that we need to invert this matrix s i minus a where i is an identity matrix so first we need to form the matrix s i minus a so s is a basically a complex variable times i matrix becomes sss diagonal matrix here is our a matrix and here is the result next we need to invert s i minus a 
So the inverse of this matrix is equal to adjugate matrix divided by determinant of that matrix. Now, determinant matrix is basically a transpose of the cofactor matrix, and here is our cofactor matrix. So if we basically transpose the cofactor matrix, we can basically obtain our adjugate matrix. So if you want to know more about uh, cofactor matrices and adjugate matrices here, I have provided a link, right, with all the with the description, it's a Wikipedia page, and here you have one worked example that explains how to compute the cofactor matrix. So you can follow this example in order to obtain everything that I obtained over here. Unfortunately, I don't want to make this video to be uh, one hour long. I want to make this video to be as relatively short as possible. Consequently, I will not perform this step. However, you can verify the steps. And my suggestion is to verify actually this step by yourself. So then you can also compute the determinant of SI minus A. And here's the determinant. So consequently, we can obtain our transfer function matrix simply by applying all these equations in this formula over here. So if you apply all these equations and all these matrices to that formula, we will obtain something like this. This is our C matrix. This is the inverse, basically, of S I minus A matrix. This is our B matrix. And once you multiply these three matrices with the one over determinant, you will obtain the results. Okay, so let us now introduce a simple MATLAB approach for solving this problem. The first step for solving this problem in MATLAB is to introduce the symbolic variable. So here is our symbolic variable, SIMSES. And let me just repeat this step for uh, just for clarity and let me clear the uh, clear my workspace. So let's do it again. And let's see here. Okay, so S is a symbolic variable. Next, you define your state space model. So here is our state space model. Here is our A, B, and C matrices. You can see them in MATLAB workspace by typing whose A, B, C, and S. And the first step is to compute this matrix, SI minus A. And here's the magic of basically MATLAB systems toolbox or MATLAB symbolic toolbox, you can simply mix ordinary matrices with symbolic expressions and you can obtain symbolic matrices. Here's our symbolic matrix and you can see it over here, it's basically symbolic. The class is symbolic, this is matrix one. And furthermore, you can even invert symbolic matrices in MATLAB. So let's invert this matrix by simply calling the inverse function. You would use the same approach for constant matrices and for symbolic matrices. And so here is our matrix two. And clearly here, you can already see that we have a determinant. So if you basically take this term out of this matrix, Inside of this matrix, you will only have the adjugate matrix. Okay, and finally, here's our transfer function. The transfer function is C times matrix 2 times B, and here's the result. We can compare this with our solution. We'll, we'll see that the result is the same. So compare this term over here with the MATLAB solution, you'll see that we obtain the identical results. Okay, so that was the first approach that relies upon the symbolic toolbox. And now let us present the second approach. But first, let us clear our workspace and erase the command window. The second approach relies upon the MATLAB control systems toolbox. Again, we will define our system, A, B, C, and D matrices. Then we will use this function called SS, and let's type help SS. Okay, 
So the explanation is that SS creates an object system representing the continuous time state space model. So if you want to, if you want to define a state space model in MATLAB, we will call this function. And as arguments, we will provide A, B, C, and D system matrices. And then here's the magic of the MATLAB control systems toolbox. We can simply transform the original state space model from the state space form into a transfer function form by simply calling tf. So let's call this function and let's see what we have. Voila, here is the result. Here is our transfer function. And then of course later on you can for example compute a step response by calling a step step function. So here is the result. And you can do all sorts of manipulations on the system you have. Okay, that would be all for today. I hope that you liked this video. If you like the videos I create, please press the like button and subscribe. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day.